just for a better understanding of my surroundings. I'm from Kentucky. There's lots of wooded areas and people love to shoot their guns, including me. Believe it or not, there was a time where I thought that there was no such thing as unknown beings or creatures being in the woods. I thought that maybe Bigfoot could be real, but I severely doubted it. But after this happened to me, I know there's something unknown and weird out there. So here's what happened. I had just bought my first AR-15 style rifle. For anybody who cares, it was a Ruger AR-556. And I bought a 60 round drum magazine for it at Gander Mountain while they were going out of business. Because why the fuck not? I read up on the drum and I read that they were truly an amazing piece of work. And they rarely had any issues at all. After a few days, it finally arrived. And I finally decided to take it out for a test drive and sight my gun a little better. And that's when everything went to shit. As I said before, I live in Kentucky, which is super wooded. Three fourths of the land I live on was just thick woods. There was a main path for driving our gators and a few smaller paths our cows made in the woods. I decided to walk along our creek. Our creek had a small path that was half cleared out by our cows, so it made traveling easier. And at the end of the path is a big field where our cows graze in. And typically that's where I sight my guns, for obvious reasons, when the cows aren't there. As soon as I crossed the fence to go to the field, I instantly felt like I was being watched, closely. I brushed it off because I've walked back there a thousand times before, and I've never been bothered by nothing. So I keep walking and ignore this feeling of being watched, but at the same time, I'm aware of this feeling. It's in the back of my mind. And I know I feel like I'm being watched, but I wasn't going to give it any noticeable attention because I'm not in any real danger. It's just my mind being stupid. The walk to the field along the creek is a very short walk. Maybe it's about two minutes at a slow pace. The further I walked, the more intense this feeling got. Like I was getting closer to whatever it was that was watching me. About halfway there, the feeling got so intense I couldn't ignore it any longer. The drum magazine I had with me was unloaded, so I stopped and I started to load it. I only brought 20 rounds with me because I was just going to sight my gun and 20 rounds should be plenty. So now that I'm stopped, I'm paying extremely close attention to what's going on around me and I'm loading my magazine. The exact moment I started to put rounds in that drum, I smelled something dead. Like it had been dead for a while and left to rot in the sun. So I started looking around and right behind me was what was left of a possum. It was torn to absolute shreds like it was placed there for me to find. The only thing was, it looked like it had been dead for maybe a day at most, and what I was smelling seemed like it far more decomposed. This obviously didn't sit well with me, so I double timed on loading my magazine. I guess I should have taken the dead possum as a last chance to turn around, but no, it's just a possum, right? I decided to keep going. I've never had any problems back there before, so I'm just assuming my brain is just being overly paranoid. I was almost to the field anyway, and that's where I saw it. I was at the end of the creek, and the feeling of being watched was so unbearable at this point. I then heard a splash in the water. Me being on edge, I immediately turned around to face the noise, gun at the ready, but with no rounds in the chamber. What I observed was this thing walking down the creek away from me. And it's something I'll never forget. It was at least eight feet tall, probably taller, and very skinny. Imagine a grown-ass man that weighs 120 pounds. Now stretch him out to be eight feet tall, but his body width stays the same. He has very long, lengthy arms and awkwardly walks on two legs. The skin on this thing is stretched so tightly across its body, it looks like at any moment it could tear just from the stress. It made no noise, aside from it splashing when it stepped in the creek. Now, I said it walked awkwardly, and it's really weird to describe. It's like, almost like a waddle, but 
taking larger steps so the waddle just looks like a duck with a thing shoved up its butt. However, the waddle could have been because the creek bank was just so muddy. Anyways, it also had a really light brown color, almost like the color of a deer. That's all I can remember right now, but if I remember anything else later, I'll post about it. Now I know why I felt like I was being watched. There's this thing, this creepy looking fucking thing. My magazine was loaded, bolt ready to send a round into the chamber. Remember earlier how I said this magazine was extremely reliable? I pressed the bolt release on the gun to chamber around just in case this monstrous thing decides to attack me. I did not intend to strike first. But, somehow, the stupid fucking magazine, the round gets stuck and won't budge out of the magazine at all. Keep in mind that I've never used this magazine before, so I know for a fact that it didn't fail from heavy use. A bolt closing from a gun has enough force to break your finger, so why didn't this magazine work? My guess is that this thing had something to do with it. The magazine never worked right again, and I returned it to Magpaw. Needless to say, I didn't tell them what happened. I just told them that the magazine failed several times and I wanted my money back. Anyway, back to the weird thing. So the gun jammed on the first round, which is usually the easiest to clear. That thing books it out of the creek without running or making any noise. I had just long enough exposure to get the details about it that I provided to y'all. Now for assumptions. This happened around late last May of last year. I still have the emails from Magpaul regarding the drum return, so I'm using them as a reference. I needed something more reliable than just my memory. As for the creature itself, me and a friend who knows a little bit more about the stuff than I do decided that it could be a fucking wendigo. Here's why. The reason we think that it's a wendigo because everything I describe matches them near perfectly. I have read that they're incredibly thin and tall. They have the stench of death that follows them everywhere. That would explain the smell at the possum carcass. They can also be very fast and several colors, ranging from light brown to black. They also sometimes violently kill other animals to scare humans away. Again, that would explain the possum. The only thing that I couldn't come up with is its behavior. Why am I still alive? Wendigos are supposed to be incredibly aggressive and territorial. Aside from watching me, it didn't do anything. It didn't try to attack or confront me. It ran away like it was scared or trying to draw me where it wanted me to be. That being said, I've never had another encounter with it. I've even gone out to the same field, taking the same exact path, and expecting myself to be watched, but I've never had that same feeling as that one day. Something was out there, and you can't convince me otherwise that there wasn't. I've even gone as far as trying to trick myself into thinking that I'm being watched out there, but it still has no comparison between that one day. Another reason why I think that this could be a Wendigo is because there's a ton of Native American presence that's been found in my area. I found a large amount of flint every year, but the real proof is in the arrowheads that archaeologists find. There's also a trail of tears site less than five miles from my home, which is a possible point of origin for this Wendigo. Who really knows though, am I right? About a year ago, I was back with my family, and it was around 8 o'clock and the sun was starting to set. We live in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. The closest neighbor was super far away. Something down in the field kept catching my eye, but I ignored it at first. My sister ended up seeing it too and kept looking out towards the trees. She was getting super freaked out about it. My mom said that we should go investigate, so me and my sister started to walk across the field towards the tree line. Big mistake. It's hard for me to describe what happened, but I can tell you this. This was the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. I didn't see it at first, and I didn't understand why my sister was so scared, until we were about a hundred yards away, and that's when I saw it. I saw this creature, it was tall, probably around eight or nine feet tall, 
It was a white humanoid with an elongated head. It had no face. It had super long arms and peeked around a tree. My sister and I both stopped in our tracks. We couldn't identify what this creature was, and we were unsure if we should continue to walk towards such a thing. Then, the unexpected happened. This thing steps out from behind the tree and sways back and forth at me and my sister, like a praying mantis. Me and my sister start running and screaming back to the house, where my mom stood, jaw dropped. She saw it too. I've never been so scared in my whole life. We then grab the binoculars and watch this terrifying creature peek in and out of the tree line, spying on us. My grandma thought that since we were kids, we had wild imaginations and was just making this stuff up, but that doesn't explain why Mommy Dearest saw it too. The sun was almost gone now, and it was getting really dark. And the darker it got, the more it moved, back and forth along the tree line. The sight was truly terrifying. So, there's not a whole lot we could do other than just watch, but the longer we watched, the more unnerved we got. So, we decided to go in for the night and lock all the doors and windows up, but even though we were inside our house, I still couldn't sleep at all. I was hearing scratching on the roof, and at one point, there was a very loud banging sound and noises coming from the barn, and I was so afraid that I would wake up and see all of our animals missing. The next morning, my grandmother asked if we heard the loud banging sounds outside last night. I just nodded. She then ended up taking my grandpa with her on her morning walk. Gee, my grandma truly gives no fucks. But I have no idea what that was. All I know is it still haunts me to this day. I used to live in North Dakota, near a patch of woods, where my cousin, twice removed, still lives. I was up there with my friend Jay, who lives there too. We were camping in the woods, just the two of us, about a mile or two into the woods. We took our mountain bikes to a 60 foot wide clearing, where we set up camp as kids. We chained up our bikes to a tree, and then we set up our tents. We decided to take a walk out to one of the old trails when about ten minutes in, we see a pair of glowing lights off in the distance. Sometimes you'd see an unusual night animal, so it wasn't too spooky at first. I wasn't inclined to be scared, as I had my dad's old twenty two rifle with me. My friend muttered something to himself, which seemed to make the eyes go away. We then do a little bit of hunting and kill six squirrels for our dinner that night. On the way back, the eyes kept it reappearing and then disappearing again. This was probably about five minutes away from our campsite, but I can see the eyes getting closer and closer and are now elevated to at least eight feet above the ground. Jay notices this and says, What the fuck is that? In which the owner of the eyes lets out a low growl, followed by thumps and the eyes coming towards us. I raise up the 22 and shoot at it twice, about a foot below where the eyes are, as my friend shines his flashlight at it. I can now clearly see what this thing is. It has antlers, ears, and large teeth. We immediately book it out of there. Jay's trying to juggle keeping an eye on it while running, and I'm trying to get the rifle ready while running to fire it again. Upon making it to the camp, I kept watching as he readies the fire pit. We eat about one squirrel each and throw the rest of them in a pond about a minute away from our campsite. So, what was it? Honestly, it was probably a wendigo. And funny enough, I'm a Native American. But I'm not from one of the groups that are familiar with this mythology. And by the way, this took place in the winter. I didn't see anything but I had a weirdest fuck experience out in the woods. I live near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains, and I hike up there pretty much from May to October every single year. A few years ago, I decided to hike this pretty strenuous trail that leads directly up to a huge rock slide. I park and I notice that I'm the only person there. I have two dogs, so I get them out of the truck and I start up the trail. 
About a mile into my hike, I come to this clearing that has this huge teepee-like structure. The trees are all woven together. I put down my walking stick and take a few pictures. In the last picture, you can see that there's a sapling that's still alive, but it's been bent over all the way backwards and woven into the teepee. I moved up the trail after the pictures were taken, and as soon as I walked past the tree structure, I immediately felt like I was being watched and the whole woods went completely silent. It was so fucking weird, there was no bugs, birds, or any other small animal noises. It was just dead fucking silent. Now don't get me wrong, I hike by myself all the time, and I don't get creeped out or too scared. I've seen bears, and I'm pretty sure there's been cougars out there that have been following me too. I keep going up, and the feeling is getting so much more intense, and my dogs are starting to act weird. Now, these dogs are experienced trail dogs, and they don't really get that weirded out. They stay super close to me, and they don't make a lot of noise normally. Shortly after noticing my dog's behavior, I realized that I left my walking stick down by that tree structure. Fuck it. Oh well, I can get a new hiking stick. I don't want to go back down there to get it and then back up. I got about a fourth of a mile left or so past the tree thing, and the feeling of being watched is just unbearable. I'm thinking to myself, okay, rationally, what's, what could be the worst that could happen? It's probably a big cat, right? So on that thought process, I begin to head back down the trail. The rational part of my brain told me to walk slowly down this trail. However, my flight response had different plans. I'm booking it full speed down a 30 to 45 degree slope, and I get down to the tree structure in the meadow, and I look up, and my walking stick is gone. Like, it's nowhere to be seen. My hiking stick is pretty distinct, because it's made of aspen, and I picked it up somewhere else. And guess what? There's no damn aspen in this part of the forest. I'm fucking terrified guys. I kept running, and I felt like I was being chased, but I never saw anything. I never heard anything either. Yes, it could have been a big cat, but why did it only start after I passed the tree structure? And how did my fucking stick go missing? I was nearly to the parking lot before the feeling of being watched and chased left me. I will never go back there ever again. Still thinking about it? gives me the creeps.